Okay, wait, wait. There we go. <laughs> I was just looking at the little picture. My little my my little pre-pandemic drawing of when A my hair was down and B it was short. It actually almost is the same length as in pigtails right now. Yeah. <laughs> and I was wearing hats. <laughs> <laughs> Well, winter is coming. Winter's you could still wear coming. hats. Maybe. Oh, I will be. Then could you could you tie your mask to your hat or pin I it tie or it. I tie it over the back of the hat. So okay. I wear my knots a little lower and then tie it on my hat. Not on my hat. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to the Sun Dragon Sideshow. The Adventures of Liz and Rebecca. Only today. Dear Becky and Liz. Dear Becky and Liz. Yes. Oh, I keep forgetting to put my necklace on. I always realize that when I get there. That could be another. I'm I'm possibly free migraine right now, and mm. and you know, amber necklace may or may not help, but psychologically, you know. Mm. Um, so this should be fun. Y'all get to you know play a game at home. Drinks or not, whatever you want, depends <laughs> on what time of day. How many times will my words mess up? That's how we know where I'm headed. I took some medicine, though, Most and I have. Caffeine. Because no coffee this morning. And hydration. Hydration? What's hydration? Hydration. Like, yeah. I this mean, is hydration. No, it's not hydration. We have it's so caffeine. many issues this morning. I got to watch the belly of my cat attempt to um, climb into cabinets over my head when I was filming this morning. Back paws going like, <laughs> as front paws. He almost made it. Almost made it. I was almost very proud of him for making it. And then I said, oh, T, move, ah, <laughs> before he fell. <laughs> so we've missed a couple of steps. Uh -oh. No, I, I just haven't gotten around to introducing myself yet. Or you. Or me. I'm Liz. I'm the minion. <laughs> <laughs> Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in sunny 50 degree Brevard, North Carolina. And I'm Rebecca. I'm the owner and operator of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber. In, in attempting to be sunny downtown Brevard, North Carolina. It's supposed to be warmer than yesterday. What? Yeah. Okay, this is this is fall in the mountains. Is it starts cold. The mayor's walking up to to the Bracken Mountain Breakfast Club in gloves and a jacket. It was colder earlier this week. Like I found it funny that we finally hit the fifties for a nighttime low because we went from seventies to sixties mm -hmm. to forties. And we never had a nighttime low in the 50s until, you know. The magic window is missing. <laughs> yeah, it was like, and now all of a sudden it's like, oh, by well, the way, and we'll it's going to be hotter than, I'm like. going to be back in a t-shirt by the middle of the day. By yep. Probably earlier than the yep. middle of the day. And I'm, I'm still sporting my hip striped sweater. Thank you very much. The actual version of this, again, we'll put the link in the, in the details. We didn't do it yesterday. Um, one of our knitters said, Ooh, I love your sweater. Hope you're going to talk about it. But yesterday was a very specific, um, we sell you stuff. We have appointments coming. Ah, VSC day. days. We don't tend to talk about. No, what we don't tend to talk or... about projects unless yeah. they are, um, intimately connected to what we're trying to sell you. So, um, this is in eco Merino from Cascade chunky. It's like between, it's like a light chunky. Um, but it was a lot of fun. And the original hip stripe sweater, I know we've talked about it before, is meant to hold two yarns together and marl it and change like from, the, so the, the bigger chunks of this go dark to light and the small chunks of this go light to dark or vice versa. Like, but I just wanted to do two colors. And every time I wear the sweater now, again, it's only been done for a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. Every time I wear it, Brian throws a joke about football because apparently I made this in school colors of at least a couple schools. Well, the thing is with school colors is every school has a combination of two colors. Like, and the shades school, could be similar or not. Any athletic yeah. thing is like, ooh, let's pick two colors. And so, and then we no get to fight what, over your colors are the same as mine. No, they're not, is it? Whatever mm. colors you pick, <laughs> yeah. you know, even my, my favorite black and red belong to some school. I guess. I don't really I don't pay know. attention either. This is the thing. <laughs> we're not we're not sports people, and I'm sorry if we're offending the sports people out there. Um, 
this is why I like back at the small shop, I had a moment where I'm like, oh, I could put out colors, yarns that people could use for school colors. And then I learned that there are such minute variations in the shades of the color. I said, forget that. Pick out your own darn colors. Yeah. Because I'm going to offend somebody. Well, if it's not the right, you know, yeah. shade, if it's... Then not... it could be a different school and, oh, no! Yeah. No, it's very serious for the people who take it very seriously. And I'm, I'm not... I'm unintentionally mocking that. I don't really mean to, but to me, it's not that important. So, I'm sorry. I'm going to leave it at that. But apparently, this is uh, both Western Carolina, which is nearby's colors of purple and gold, kind of. It's not really gold, though. It this looks, olive oil, it looks gold on camera, but it's, it's not. It's grello. Yeah, it's kind of more grello -y. It's also very close to LSU's colors, apparently, because this, I, because I've been told, not because I know, because I've been, so, um, this is not me showing school spirit. This is me liking these colors and making a sweater out of it. <laughs> um, and we also had people who commented on what you are wearing. I, I'm wearing my Fall River. Yes, and, and, um, and I think Jan or someone, uh, shout out to Jan. When you got up to get something, she went, ooh, at the back it's, of it. Um, <clears throat> Fall River's crochet. Knit Fall crochet. River's crochet. And I did it in the Lang, uh, Kuno. Kuno, which is a color fadey, changey it's a sort of. giant ball. Yeah. Giant cake that, um, that shifts through colors. And I did, uh, I went up a hook. I think I did a seven or an H. Mm -hmm. She wanted it. I wanted it and bigger. Squishy and yes. And I used all but like one yard. So she made it bigger of, than the pattern. Yeah. The cakes are repeat. The cakes are two, 200 skin, grams, 200 grams. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's the, the pattern itself calls for like a skein and a half of Finger. fingering weight yard. Mm -hmm. And this is two full skeins. And I, went down till I had a yarn. Because, you know, why like, have leftover yarn? I yeah. mean, that just is troublesome. And the, the Lang, it fluffs. Like, it just, it fluffs so pretty. So it's it really looks cool. thicker than um, I really want to make another color that we've, we've discussed on the show before, taking a, the blue color and breaking it up to make my pappy on. My next pappy. You know, I have so, so many, many. papillons I want to make. And and I only just, one of my morning meditations this week, I actually got back to a papillon and did like one square. A bubble, a back and forth is in the direction to square. And I did like this much. So one of these days. I have too many projects I'm working on, which um, we're not necessarily going to show off today because we have questions to get to. But you brought in stuff I, that I don't want us to neglect. I, I brought in the yarn that I worked on last weekend um i i got and we started filming like right at nine so maybe we'll go a little longer today because we have lots of questions and want to show this off this this is she it, made that i made this like it came in roving that was multicolored and <laughs> I, it was what i played with on my my new skin and anyway it, it just it looks like something you would pay a lot of money for in the shop to be quite honest it's, it's thick so thin cool. it's about 200 yards it's gorgeous i don't know what i'm gonna do with it yet i keep i keep thinking about doing um there's the uh what was the blanket that the oh that mila fiori blanket yeah from um, Rogo. i have it anyway it's the midwest throw yeah um <clears throat> it's uh half brioche kind of thing anyway but I thought about making it a scarf and you take one thicker yarn and one thinner yarn like a super bulky and a bulky on mm -hmm. a 13 needle and you do this really cool thing and it looks like it's got colored <clears throat> changey ribs on one side and on the other side it doesn't and um I thought about but I don't know what I would pair with this so I thought about like black or white, or I don't know. I think, anyway. well, and we know what black and white do now from the Papillon to colors. Yeah. I think black would make it pop more. Yeah. Um, hopefully. So, anyway, it's thoughts. It's for... really pretty. Like, the gold in that is, like, this yellow, buttery, yummy. Yeah. Like, it's hard to um, to really describe. I, I showed it, it I showed it off on Knit Night, 
And but it was so dark. And yeah, everybody mm -hmm. was like, "Oh, that's cool," but I can't see any. And it, it was, you know, so it's hard to see on camera. But there's little pops of golds and purples and blues, and it actually matches my dress today. Mm -hmm. It's really pretty. So. And then you you have mm -hmm. some other not as blingy. Not as blingy, but very pretty. Um. One of my, I wanted to. Hard to use it to pull in a chair. I'm sorry, they're being really loud outside. It's like, really? It's so difficult. So difficult to position chairs. I, I'm sorry. Half wanted to play with doing fractal spinning. And um, what is fractal spinning? Fractal spinning, you do, it's almost like Peter Brook Farms, or it's okay. about the same. You, one ply is super long, um, changing colors. And the other ply is really, really short, changing colors mm. to where you get a That's whole. That's cool. Yeah. This isn't it. <laughs> <laughs> this is not that. Not really. But um, anyway, I wanted to do morning yarn. Um, so M O U. I, M O U. Yeah. So not, I would have. Good morning. <laughs> not afternoon yarn. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> not evening yarn. So yeah. it's blacks Actually, and grays evening. and lilacs and dark purples, um, all kind of blended together. And it's, it's pretty. It's actually, it reminds me of the yarn I'm making. Um, I'm making my crochet shawl out of the, the night shade. The night shade, yep. In um, Cascade Heritage Wave, but prettier. It because is. it's because yeah. it's natural, fun looking. It's got silk and some cashmere. I haven't crocheted in a while. I had this thought on the way in. I was like, we're going to answer questions so I could be knitting or crocheting too because I'm not going to show off a lot of stuff. And I already am not doing that because I think, especially with my head feeling a little wonky, that would just have me being like, wait, what? What are we talking about? Yeah. Huh? One of these days. It wouldn't, do you think it would be fun to have both of us sitting here knitting? It might be really cute. I just don't know if I could do it. <laughs> you talk with your hands. We've discussed this. But before. but I could hand knit and talk, no, right? No, because you right? put it down but talk. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I won a challenge on um the Chamber of Commerce's like they do trivia on the Zoom meetings now. And I won a challenge because I basically like kept my knitting in my hands or dropped it and typed like I was like and he's like, How did you type that answer and knit at the same time? I'm like, it's magic. It's just magic. Anyway, yeah, but you, that, you that's do something typing. long enough. That's not yeah. talking. Yeah. Okay. We should get to our. We should get letters. to our letters because our letters, both we have two letters. Did you check for emails. I I did check for emails and I will double check now. But we didn't get any okay. emails. Well, last that's time. probably. I mean, an email might have to wait at this point because the two letters we got, <coughs> um, which are really cute, by the way, um have multiple questions in them. And, and so we're just gonna see what we get to. Um, and I'm not even sure in which order, they both arrived on the same day. So we can't even be like, we'll start with this one first because it came in first. Um, <laughs> we have claimed our weapons. <laughs> um, you wanna start with that one? I can start with this one. This one is from PIP. We'll find out what PIP stands for at the end of. And we have we have kind of breezed through these, but that was a couple of days ago, so we've already forgotten. So we might stumble trying to read them. We apologize in advance. Ah, we're trying to do it justice. Pinless in Pisgah Forest. Pinless, yes. Okay. Dear Becky and Lizzie. There's little hearts on stationery, by the way. There's hearts and snowflakes. Oh, I kind of really like the snowflake. Um, winter is always coming. Happy fall. Pardon the snowflake note paper, although, as you know, winter is always coming. Happy fall. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't realize I was almost preempting the wonderful, she pays attention. She yeah. knows. I have a couple of questions for you. I love knitting and crocheting shawls and usually make them long or large enough to wrap or tie. However, sometimes I like a smaller, light, lighter wrap that doesn't lend itself to tie. I have one shawl pin that is really a hairpin that I repurpose. Basically a curved piece of metal with a wooden pin that sticks through it. She even drew a picture, says not an artist, but that's a really good picture. So um, do you use shawl pins? If so, what style works best for you? They're in the basket in between the quarantine boxes. Okay. Um, okay. I trolled Etsy, and of course, there are thousands of designs in many styles. 
just wondering if some work better than others or is it really just a matter of taste? I'd love to see some of the pins you use. My next question is about your YouTube channels. I love watching all of them. You are both so much fun and it almost makes up for not being able to come into the shop to hang out. If you could have a theme song oh God. of a sideshow <laughs> without worrying about copyright laws, what would it or they be? Or maybe have Weird Al do a spoof of one. Just curious. Thank you for having a great shop and fun channels that keep me inspired. Pip, pinless in Piscoforest. <laughs> okay, this is fun. This is fun. All right. Whew. So I I don't actually use pins a lot, but we have some shawl pins here in the shop, which we really really like. Um, and and there are there are and, uh, there are billions of different kinds. Of there shawl are pins. there are like giant safety pin cute things like that. Um, and then we have some handmade ones here uh, by two companies. Lick and Flames is a husband and wife team that does some pottery, some ceramic stuff. And the husband does most of the pottery. And um, the two examples I have here are from them. And we also have um, Crafty Flutterby has some really cute ones too. So this is one of my all-time favorites. And I, I hold this closer, but this is going to get in the way. It's a spiral shawl pin. It looks like this. I, I, I like those. those yeah. Are... Um, the, the, you'll see them. Lots of people make them. Uh, Look and Flames is not exclusive. What they do have is they have different finishes. They have different glazes they put on, and it's two-sided. So you can use it in two different ways. And... Um, you might be able to see from far away here. Um, it's just woven in. What I like about this one is it is attached at different points. You take it and you spiral it in. And I could. So you don't have one point or two points pulling Only like on the one whole shawl. Point. You can even out the stress. So again this isn't that pretty and you can arrange how much of it is seen or not seen and then there's the other side Ooh. and we have them in all different there might be some more in here right we were we were helping someone buy a shawl pit the other day but so here let me see can i do this without really being able to see what i'm doing Her. so you can go in it's turning, so I can't. Would you like me to hold it in place? Can you can you just hold, touch your shoulder there? So I would go in and out and spiral around in and out. And spiral. And if I wanted to, I could tag it down again over there. And see, this is on the dark side, so, you, so it actually blends. If I wanted to pop more, I turn around to the other yeah. side. Uh, but yeah, different points of tension, so you're not getting a snag in a hole. This is another type of shawl pin that they have. It's a bit more of a bold statement. And we have them in different... Yeah. They got caught. Oh. I got issues. Hang on. There we go. The, the cute decorative little cog up there got caught in some yarn. But this, you stick the yarn, a little bit of your shawl through here, boop, and then you stick the pin, you stab the pin through. So, again, <laughs> look, I'm dressing. <laughs> so you put this guy on and stick enough of it up through that you can stab it. I'm doing this by watching the camera. And those ones, the holes to, to stuff stuff through, if it's a thicker shawl, it might not it's work. work. Where the the ones and this is very similar to what the picture is that she's using where it's um a shape and then you stick it through the mm -hmm. the ends you lay it you lay the um the, the patterny piece with the spirals this is crafty flutter buys dragon i love it lay that on top and you can kind of bend it a little so you can stick the pin through 
in through the top of the, the outside piece, through your shawl, and back out again. Now, these stabby pieces for both of these, see the little stabby guy? It's not very thick and a little bit bendable. So but again, if it's really thick, you might bend everything. Yeah, I, although <laughs> with my hats, I love, love these because I use them as hat pins on the side of my hats. So, and they'll go through thicker. Um, we have a lot of straight shawl pins like this. You just, they may or may, they, there's no way to really secure them to make sure they're gonna stick. And wiggle around enough, might come apart, kind of but a, it's stable. With shawl pins, it's kind of a personal preference, although yeah. for the best and most favorite one, we mm -hmm. go with the spirals. Yes, definitely go with the spirals. As long as, and the spirals are somewhat, the, the, it's, it's a flexible, it's a piece of art is why I really like yeah. it. But it's also a little bit flexible to weave in and out. Um, it's not a sharp point on the end. So it, it really, it works for knitted and, and crocheted and maybe loosely woven things. But for silk, for um, really delicate fabrics, this is not gonna work. Not designed for that. Um, besides that, if you had something with a sharp point, you'd probably put a hole in your silk. So yeah. I tend to tie my silk scarves in place. Back when I wore scarves as a teacher, I would do loopy things instead of pinning stuff. But so, so the second question is, <laughs> what would our theme music be? I gotta tell you, when, when Liz read this, uh, yesterday or two days ago, like the first thing, I feel like it would be a merging of a bunch of things and I never really fully settled on what it would be, um, personally. But one of the first things that popped into my head, which would be a portion of our song, the first thing was Welcome to the Jungle. <laughs> By what is that, Guns N' Roses or something? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, the first thing in my head because it, I just find it funny, is this is the yarn that never ends. Yeah, <laughs> it's the version of this is the song that, this is the yarn that never ends. My friends. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think it would, it would be some kind of merging of, um, oh, I had started to search like friend songs because I think we have become very good friends since stumbling across each other when I opened the shop. Um, and I was like, I was looking up and there was like something for like um, teen magazine that was, I was looking at friend songs, right? And teen magazine was bringing up all these like hip 2020 songs. I'm like, that's not us. I'm We're sorry, like the hip us. 1990s songs. <laughs> yeah. Although there was, um, uh, there's the song by Macklemore, um, like, so the ceiling can't hold up, you know, like that song was one of the songs on the list. And I was like, Ooh, yeah, that could, that could be a little part of it. Like if we're making a soup out of this, um, it's like, can't stop or whatever. Um, so let's see, uh, 32 best songs about friendship of all, oh wait. Okay. Apparently, since I searched this last night, it was like, your link is old. I'm old. Who cares? Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, Randy Newman's You Got a Friend in Me, maybe. It, that, that's not our speed, really. Um, white Stripes, We're Going to Be Friends. I don't know if I've heard that one, actually. I like White Stripes, but The Queen, You're My Best Friend. That might be getting close to it. <laughs> Um, again, because it's an older song, too, yeah. you know, um, and the Beatles, a little help from my friends. Um, that, I think, Welcome to the Jungle, mixed with I Get By with a Little Help from My Friends, might actually describe life in the shop right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Um, oh, God, the next one is Thank You for Being a Friend. That's the Golden Girls. <laughs> <laughs> we're not that old. I think we're like that. Um, and then lean on me, you know, stuff like that. James Taylor's You've Got a Friend, you know, a lot of these could, could work for us. Um, stand by me, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah. Anyway. Um, so I'm trying to think of anything else though. It would have to be like something about life being just kind of crazy, um, and surviving it all. So if y'all have an idea for that, like, I don't know, Liz, if you brainstormed anything beyond I, that. I, I didn't. Like life got crazy and so we lost track of being we, able to we, do something up good for We that. read the letter a couple days ago. It was like Tuesday. And, yeah and then 
when we when we got them, we read them so that you know we know there's a heads up and. Which I totally forgot until she started reading the letter. I'm like, ooh, ooh, ooh. let me go get stuff. <laughs> ooh. Because <laughs> show prep was that. Um, but, like, I don't know. I'm horrible with remember, remembering names of songs, so, you know. Oh, Ain't No Mountain High Enough. Yeah, things like that. It's all cheesy, though. But, yeah, I yeah. think it definitely, I'm trying to think of a good song that Weird Al could parody, because I Oh, we need your help with this. Sun Dragon audience, we need your help with this because I'm sure there is like the perfect song that that somehow Weird Al could turn into being about a yarn shop. And it would be fantastic. We should send him a letter. Yeah. <laughs> turn Welcome to the Jungle into a shop into a song about Welcome to the yarn shop. We got the do 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 Oh my gosh. That's going to be stuck in my head for the rest of the day. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Yarn Shop Vikings at the door. Yeah. If I had time Vikings and... at the door. <laughs> um, if I had... If I, if I, if I so had... True. Oh, that's why they were saying in my meeting, you have names for everything. Because yeah. we have the Vikings and everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. So... Now, if I had time and energy, I would totally be rewriting the words to Welcome to the Jungle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It, it, did, we, did we answer both? We did. Oh, she drew a picture. Yeah, that's, that's her art of what she has used as a shawl pen. Okay, oh. so, so when she was saying, it's like her picture. Yeah, because, okay. I didn't hold it up. I gotta see if, you know, I'm oh, not like, I'm not showing off anyone's name or anything. I'm not revealing um, identities. But that was very cute. That's a lot like what we use. So there's, ooh, there is a cool thing online that is like, you, you stick it in and then you can turn it to kind of lock it in place. And we've had people say, hey, do you have those? We don't. They look really cute. Though. They're like Scottish and cool. The, the, the last yarn thing I remember. So shawl cuffs are huge yes. and big and you know, like it's a piece of leather with a, a clasp and fastened. It's and like fastened. our wrist rollers, but wrap them up like thicker and 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 shorter. But some of some of our customers, Amy, who shall remain anonymous, has um, <laughs> she's Amy taken who shall remain anonymous that I just named, but we only yeah. use first names here. She she took her um shawl or her wrist ruler, yeah, and she'll wrap it two or three times around she her shawl. She made it into a shawl. She made it so into it's like shawl. you wrap it around and then right where you you do the last little flip over of, or flip front of the end of your shawl, you bunch it together and you fasten it. We don't have those here yet either, but they're really cool. And I'm all for supporting um, either local artists in your local area if you can, or people who hand make things. So even if we're not carrying them, and you like the idea, go search them out and buy them. But if you can, buy them from someone who has taken the time to craft it instead of it being mass produced somewhere. That's what I would say. We have mass produced stuff at the shop too. But you know, if you, if you can and you can afford it, support someone who's taken the time to make it. You know. Um, I think Crafty Flutterby actually does make sh um, the shawl cuffs as well. Back when I, I go to, when I go to SAF, the Southeastern Animal Fiber Fair, I go on the last day and I like breeze through and I go to the, the handmade artist and artisan type people and I say, what can I buy wholesale from you now that you've had a chance to sell full price and sell in my shop? And last year was the, was the last time I was able to pick some of these up because we don't have SAF this year and she wasn't wholesaling her shawl cups yet, but she makes them. So Crafty Flutterby, it's under my, it's under my price tag. Hang on a second. Um, craftyflutterby.com. You can check her out. Um, and I think you can buy directly from her. So that would be great because we want to support her. And right now, um, I could buy some wholesale stuff from her on her online shop. If I could get the shawl cuffs in, I will, but please buy from her because she's cool. All right. Um, I, I know who this is from, I'm not saying, but we had a conversation and, and now I can see what she was saying. Okay. Um, isn't this pretty? Yeah. Okay. So, dear Becky and Lizzie, you both are such a delight to watch and interact with. 
Thank you. <laughs> um, I hope you know that all of the fibery positive vibes y'all are putting out there are greatly appreciated. Thanks. I, I like to do what we can because, you know, life is crazy enough. Super crazy. And y'all can't enjoy the Liz and Rebecca show in person, which used to be our thing. So, um, I am one of those knitters that will finish a complicated project ASAP while the stockinette in the round languishes in a project bag never to be seen again. Me too. I have my, my very easy triangle shawl, so Pearl Soho triangle wrap thing is sitting at home. Oh, okay. I also like to be always improving my skills and tackling new challenges. So I was wondering if you could give me some leads on some of the more challenging and or advanced techniques that you know or have even just heard of. There is so much yet to learn and I want to get to it all eventually if that is even possible. Yeah, start like a million projects at once like me and then touch them all. And me, no. Um, sincerely, a knitting masochist because you know, she wants to tackle it all and just be punished, but it's fun too. And there's a PS, why did you choose Sun Dragon for the shop name? And why are yellow and orange, reddish orange, whatever, I don't know, the shop colors? Thank you, Knitting Masochist. I think we all have a little masochism in ourselves about, and some people say, no, I just wanna stick with the easy stuff and that's okay, that can be its own masochism because the repetition can get like, wah, or can be very soothing. Um, I personally like if I could limit myself to two projects. I would try to have one complicated and one easy. So like like we always tell people, you know, if you want to push your limits to have two projects, like so when you get bored of the easy one, like she's saying, you would switch to the complicated one. And when your brain hurts from the complicated one, you have an easy one to go back to. Well, and because but, we know who this is and we we interact with But we're going to try to act like we don't know no, who it is. No, I know. But, but like, looking at some of her projects that we've seen her do on Knit Night, mm -hmm. she already does crazy complicated <laughs> stuff. She like, might already know the most complicated stuff. But but I think it's it's a good wider conversation yeah. for, for knitting techniques if you want to push yourself a little bit. I mean, I've had, yeah. so one of the, one of the, techniques that is talked about in hushed tones and considered complicated, which I don't know if I do, I mean, it has some challenge to it, is brioche. And people are like, but that's a pastry, is both. I, <laughs> I, I tell people all the time, <laughs> there are two kinds of people who do brioche. <laughs> the first kind talks about it in hushed tones. I'm going to go home and brioche. I'm going to lock myself in a room <laughs> with no music or music with no words. And I'm going to sit down and I'm going to brioche. And the other kind of people that do brioche are like, hey, my favorite TV show's on. I'm going to pull out my brioche and do everything all at the same time because it's brioche. And well, and, and I've had, hang on, sorry. I, saw I didn't brioche I for a long time because I was kind of terrified. Because people were like, <gasps> it's brioche. Um, like, this is a fancier brioche. We've got two colors going on in it. Da -da -da. Um, and brioche, when you do it with two colors, you can see one color prominently on one side and one, one on the other. It, it's, if you get the mantra and you, if it clicks, a lot of techniques, if they click, then they're not as complicated anymore. But I've had people who just learned to knit and then said, okay, brioche, done. Um, and it was challenging for them, but it wasn't because they were a beginning knitter that they couldn't do it. It just took some time. They had to come back several times and you know, then the pandemic happened and the world fell apart or else we'd probably still be meeting to help them. Well, watching, <laughs> watching your brioche classes, like when I first started working here and you started mm. teaching brioche and you would have people come in and, and for some people it would click. And I had one person, I love the top of that hat. Isn't that cute? Um, I had one person who like, cause everyone's like, okay, it took me a while. I kind of got, I had one person that she took one lesson with me and then she's brioching in the car. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's, it's, we were, <laughs> we were like, 
there is no conversation generally during your brioche class. Like I sat at the or end of the table. Or a lot of muttering under your breath. There's to mu to muttering, the there's, you know, whatever. <laughs> but like nobody goes, so how was your day? And you know. Or if you start talking because you think you got it, it's like, oh crap. It, yeah, ends in sadness. Yeah. And then the 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 one gal came in and, and she, Rebecca's like, okay, so this is what you do. And we were talking or talking. And then all of a sudden, we're we're having full blown conversations at the table, all three of and us. And she's got this much. And time. she's got that much time. And it's like, and she goes, "Oh so, wait, hold on, I got I got an issue. Can you look at this?" And Rebecca's like, "Yeah, okay, not an issue." And, and fix it. another yeah. six inches before she left, it was. It, it looks like you're ribbing with two different colors, which you kind of are, but you're only using one color at a time, and and it's all about learning the the, the mechanics of it, you know. Um, but this is sometimes, for some people, this is like one of the Mount Everest's of knitting skills. And I'm trying to think about other challenging knitting skills. Like, and some, some people listening to this are going to go, that's not difficult. Not for you. But for some other people, it's like, ooh, that looks crazy. There's, there's like different layers to doing color work. Like this is one type of, of showing off two colors in the same spot. Um, there is what's called, we, we've talked about some of these before, but we can kind of like lay them out. This is like last week we were laying out um, fibers. Is that what we were doing last week? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's patterning in knitting called mosaic. And again, people hear the word and they're like, ooh, sounds complicated. It's really knitting with one, like it looks like you're doing complicated switching colors work, but you're knitting over with one color and slipping stitches of the other color. And then knitting the, the, the color A, color B. Knitting with color A, slipping stitches of color B in pattern. Knit two, slip two, knit two, slip two. On the way back, you knit or purl the color you're using, which is color A. And you slip the stitches of color B that you slipped on the previous row. And then on the next row, you pick up color B. You leave color A hanging. So you only have one yarn in your hand at a time. And as you go, you're knitting with B in the right order and slipping A stitches. And then on the way back, you're knitting the B stitches you knit on the first row and you're slipping the A stitches. It ends up looking like you did really complicated color work holding two colors. And you didn't. But you didn't. And then the next level up from that would be actual stranded color work or fair aisle. And we've had the conversation before, not all fair aisle is stranded. Oh no, all fair aisle is stranded. stranded, not all stranded. Not all stranded is considered fair aisle. So, um, but that's where you actually have either holding a yarn in each hand or holding two yarns in one hand and flipping back and forth, but you'll knit two with A and then two with B and then two with A. Both colors go around the whole row. So um, those are different levels of color work that can be more complicated. Then there's lace work when you have open holes and fancy patterns, but really, that's not that complicated. It, it's combinations of intentionally making holes with yarn overs and increasing or decreasing around it to compensate. And if it's a chart, keeping track of what row you're on. Yeah. Like, I, <laughs> if you've done or tried or dabbled in like every, like. Technique. Technique. Mm -hmm. Or at least, Really, everything in knitting is a combination of knitting and purling. Mm -hmm. So, you know, or yarn over. Like, pretty much, that's it. Yeah. It's once you know how to knit and purl, you basically have everything you need. It, cables, used cables. to used to look to me like voodoo magic. And I was like, how can you possibly do that? Like, like what we showed off on Tuesday with having all this crazy pattern and texture. My stepson was like, that's the most complicated thing I've ever seen in knitting. And I was just like... Let me show you some other stuff I'm working on. But um, it's, it's, not, it's not as voodoo magic as it looks. It took me years before I tried cables, the big twists. And I that. could cable before I could knit. You just need, you need a third needle, which <laughs> sounds crazy. But it, it's, I've had so many people I've talked to cable who go, oh, that's it? Why that's wasn't it. I doing this before? That was my reaction too when I started cabling. So um, I'm going to really quickly go into... Um, Ravelry because they'll have like construction techniques and see what else they list and see if I know what it all is or if we want to mention anything else. Can you think of anything else? I 
we could think about the, in, in crochet, there are some, there's like puffs and there's post stitches and there's all kinds of fun things, but I don't know if we have time to describe them the, all. The one thing I thought about, and we, we put it on a sticky note to mention, oh, yeah, yeah. was and if, if you've it. tackled a lot of different things. Or if you want to learn a lot or, of different things. Yeah. There's a master's in knitting. It's not time. It's not like you go and sit in classes, you know? Um, and and it's, it's somewhat open-ended. They want you to try to do each level of it in about a year. But um, it's from the Knitters Guild of America. It's got three levels. You pay like, it's like, back when I tried it, it was like $100 a level. It might be more now, who knows. But it leads you through different techniques from easy to hard depending on the level, you learn about writing patterns, you learn about the, the best way to write a pattern. Um, it, it helps you understand the logistics and how they like the logistics to be systematized because not everyone follows that. But yeah. you do all these swatches and you try to get gauge on a lot of them. Um, my, I, I started level one years ago and I quit because I was also a teacher at the time, it was crazy. Um, but level one, you had to write a report about blocking. So you had to do some research and books and stuff like that. Um, you learn a lot though, because you make all these swatches, you do all this stuff, you make, put it in a notebook and you send it off to the Knitting Guild of America and somebody critiques it and writes all over it and says, you need to fix this and you fix it and you send it back and you reach a point where, um, you have hit the level that they want you to, to go on to the next one. By the end, you are writing patterns. You are doing all kinds of crazy stuff. You're doing like, that's the best way to learn all the techniques you want to learn. And I would, I would say that if, if you're running out of ideas on what to do mm -hmm. that, you know, by that point, you might as well, you know, work on getting the street cred. Rebecca says you get a little pin. You get a pin and when you're done. Yeah. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> we, I, I, There's I'm, also a crochet yeah. masters. It's one level, but yeah. I'm completely content in my own little garter world. Completely content. Like, <laughs> I'm like, ooh, I can brioche. I can do lace work on a chart. I'm happy doing garter papillons for okay. the rest of my life. Fabric characteristics. This this might give us, I'm going to look through a couple different categories on Ravelry. Okay. Um, we're, we're still, we're right about 45 minutes. We might go a few more minutes because we have to talk about sun dry. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, twisted stitches uh, uh, often is just knitting in the back or front or knitting in it in a different way. Textured, smocked. I haven't done a lot of smocking, so I can't really talk to that. There's like tucked rib or, or tucked cables. There's things that, that maybe don't need cable needles. I am not as well versed in those. Um, slip stitches, reversible. There's um, double knitting. Uh, to some extent, um, the there's jacquard. There's where you're knitting the front and back of the fabric at the same time. That can be really fun things. Eyelets, lace, and mesh, I think, are all variations of lace work. Mm -hmm. um, drop stitches, that is really fun. Dropping them all the way down and back up again. And, and there, we were talking yesterday, There's who, there was... Chevron. Uh, there's, there's two different kinds of drop stitches. Yeah, that I did. Were, and you've done both. <laughs> well, I did, I did a tips and tricks this, yeah. um, this Monday, my tips and tricks was on the drop stitch that you create in the row by yarning over between each stitch for a certain number of times. And then you drop it off on your next row, which creates elongated stitches, just kind of whoop, hanging with, you can stick your yeah. fingers through type of thing. And then the new technique that people are like, ooh, how do you make those braids? Are I don't know where mine is. My dragon wing cowl is somewhere. Um, but it's it's it, usually you do like a whole lot of garter, so just knit 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 every row, and then you drop like say three or four stitches all the way down through everything you've knit, and you pick them back up in in thicker chunks. So like three strands pulled through three strands, and it makes this thick braid looking thing over a more delicate fabric. I, I did them on my hat, so it looks like I have a French braid going down mm -hmm. both sides of the hat. The dragon wing cowl is a really great mm -hmm. example of that. And there was a sweater. Um, sorrel. 
I think is what it was called. Um, S O O O D. No, that's. Oops. Oops. Hang on. No. Nope. I can't type. Um. I'm trying to. Yeah. That's got the drop stitches picked up over the top of the sweater. I'm kind of thinking about making that in green. Yay. Um, but let me go back to what I was looking through. And then we should wrap up pretty soon. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, filter, hang on. The, the first time I did the drop stitches, like I watched Rebecca do her dragon wing and we were both terrified at oh, the same time. But by the second or third one, it's like not a big deal. It was fun. And Exhilarating and terrifying. Then I'm like, I'm going to do that on a hat. And uh -huh. everybody at midnight was like terrified. That, so, and yeah. Um, bobble popcorn nups. Um, bobbles can be in knitting. I've, I've made a bobble filled um, pillow. Puff stitches are kind of what they're called and they're crochet. This has brioche slash tuck stitch. So I don't know why they're putting them on the same category, but maybe I have to try some tuck stitches because maybe it's similar. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, brioche involves wrapping stitches that you're not knitting in a way that you can see them, like the color doesn't get too entangled. It's really cool. Cables, chevrons, chevron slash flame stitch. I'm always interested in the categories of Ravelry. Drop stitches. Okay, so that that does most of that. Um, I'm trying to see color work. There's we've we've addressed some certain types of color work. Um, I'm trying to look for there was a construction. I want to say, eh, I don't want to waste y'all's time too much, um, but. I know this, there's like broomstick lace. There's all kinds of fun things that I really just haven't dabbled in enough. Like we don't claim to be experts here. We claim to just be working from the knowledge we have, which is always expanding. So well, there's, there's other stuff you can do. There's also the micro and macro, mm -hmm. like where you take stuffed animals or whatever, mm -hmm. or sweater patterns. Like we've seen, there's a, a lady who makes full-blown ferrile sweaters under a microscope with uh, surgical steel wires, and you can lay them out on your finger. So like, if someone wants to do that. But you can also mat make them bigger, you know, and like play around with, with that. That could be fun. What so are you? I'm getting, we want to talk about Sun Dragon. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm getting a little prop. So, Sun Dragon. Why do you choose Sun Dragon for your shop name? That's not the only prop you should get. What? I'll go get the other one. You want to get these? Not, not your painting, your other one. The, the one Ben makes. The big one in the wind. Oh! <laughs> Migraine. Yeah. Can you, is it, it's right in front. It's the one in front. This one? It's, it's the one you're holding. It's the one you're holding. You can bring the others over too if you want. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I gotta wait for her thing. Okay. So, so this is why that is, this is why the shop is called Sundry. Just this little guy. So my nephew Ben, he is thirteen now. Um, back in two thousand sixteen. Christmas of Christmas. 16. Yeah, she knows the story. <laughs> um, he was really getting into origami. He made this for me. He made everybody um, the basic origami dragon, which is complicated to fold, but he made the same dragon for all of us in different colors. And um, he told us why. We were going to get, we got the colors we got. Like dad got brown and mom got blue and he wrote us notes. Somewhere I might still have the note. I might not, I don't know what you said. But um, he said, in his origami world, this is how they all started. In my origami world, you would be, and for me, he said, I would be a sun dragon. And the reason he said that is because I am active and creative. And I went, hmm. 
Um, and 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 because at the time, <laughs> at the time, I was an ultra runner, and and I did a lot of really active. I was working with my friend Myrna, Myrna Valerio. Shout out to her. Woo. Um, co-teacher, not co-teacher, fellow teacher. We didn't co-teach a class or anything, but I can. I would I would say I consider myself the training partner, because I worked out with her because it kept me sane, migraines and stuff during teaching, and she was work she was doing really cool stuff and it was really fun to do stuff with her so i was running a lot like every day and doing crazy workouts and sometimes he would do them with me and so active and creative sun dragon that's what sun meant to him the sun dragon and so on a run when i was starting to plan my business i was as i was going through weeks and weeks of cheesy names for yarn chops and things I was like, oh, this play on words, and I bet it's already been done. Ooh, and that's just dorky. And <laughs> this kept coming back to me, Sun Dragon. The active and creative thing kept coming back to me. And I was also trying to have my shop be a yarn and art supply shop. So the creativity aspect of this kept coming back to me. And so, I, and, and it, just, it just kept resonating with me. So I went for it. I said, Sun Dragon. And I, I searched if that had been a registered name in um, North Carolina, you know, or anywhere really, but especially yeah. North Carolina, and it hadn't, so I snagged it. <laughs> and um, and he was this was my inspiration for um, starting to work on a logo. It was a yellow dragon, so that's where the yellow side of the shop colors comes from. And um, and I doodled on my iPad, which is long since dead. I don't think I've charged it in years with the little sketch app on my um, iPad. And it just so happened um, as I was planning, I broke my leg doing a Tough Mudder, doing the active stuff. And so I was stuck on the couch for a week or two trying to plan my business and I was sketching. And I came up with, I finally settled on vi different variations. You'll see different variations. There's a slightly different version on our t-shirts, but this little guy, who's a dragon, who's yellow. The reason he's yellow is because of the origami guy became my logo. And my graphic designer, the reason the orange or the red orange came into it is, is my friend Lindsay, who's my graphic designer at LS Creative, I think is her, is her name now. Um, I asked her to help me work on logo and fonts and stuff. And she started pulling to go with the yellow, this orangey red color. And, you know, I don't think either of these were colors that were my favorite colors when we started this, when, you know, in life, I'm a purple and, um, and green fan, if anything, not so together, but, you know, but this is what she came up with me and with, with for me, I should say, and I really love it. And so they became the colors. So the crochet dragon who's out in our front window, who you might see on our social media stuff, I made him out of a nice golden yellow. And he has a red stomach and red wings because it just works with the colors. So that's, I mean, it's been a weird journey, but that's how it all came together. So, yeah. Um, but he, so he's kind of, he's, he's kind of embarrassed about this. But then the next Christmas, he said, well, this guy's alone. Next Christmas or maybe two after that, he started making me more elaborate dragons out of that same yellow. So we have a bunch here in the shop. We, we have a whole collection of origami. Of things that, he's made. They're, they're all right in front of the register. Yeah. So when he, and some of them are just kind of falling over in front of the register right now, but you know, um, he made me a white squirrel because Brevard is known for their white squirrels and it's very cute. We've got another yellow dragon. He gave me, he said we needed to up our origami game. So he we have had a shadow dragon. We have, a, oh yeah, that's right. He gave everybody shadow dragons. They're all black one Christmas. And he also um, donated his, his little Yoda that he, you know, not baby Yoda, this is pre-baby Yoda, but he knit, um, he, he folded a Yoda out of green and we have it here at the shop too. He likes to fall over the Yoda. Yeah. But anyway, um, it's almost time for us to be ready for Vikings. And so this is a little longer episode than usual, but we're trying to hit all the questions. We still haven't really circled back to blocking and the lady who asked me about blocking, I need to get, I need to email you. Um, about maybe setting up a lesson time in case we don't get to talking about it, like a Zoom time or something, because our in-person appointments are booked solid. And um, blocking is something that we could 
I, I was talking to people before we started going into the quarantine. Um, Pre-quarantine, the blocking lessons in the shop would have been difficult anyway because you have to let things dry. And so that becomes uh, just talking in theory or doing it here in the shop and leaving it. So um, we could talk some theory about blocking another time. Again, if there aren't letters, but right now we have letters. So um, you, I, I'm trying not to use names if we're trying to protect people's uh, whatever. Um, if you emailed me about blocking, um, follow up with me if I don't get back to you, okay? Because life is insane right now. So Just we're not meaning to neglect anybody, but life gets welcome really Welcome to the yarn shop. We got welcome Vikings outside. Welcome to the yarn shop. We got Vikings at the door. <laughs> got to come up with some other words. Okay. We're going to go now. <laughs> Have a good weekend. Join us for Knit Night. Yeah, th thumbs up us if you can on, on YouTube. Join us for Knit Night tomorrow night um, on Zoom. That would be wonderful. Yep. And uh, we have a Saturday Zoom session, but it's not coming up till like the 24th of October. So we still have a few weeks before that one. Um, write us letters at Dear Becky and Lizzie, Sun Dragon Art and Fiber, 35 South Broad Street, <laughs> Brevard, North Carolina, 28712. Or email me, <laughs> Liz, at sundragonartandfiber.com. Yes. And, um, Check out the VSC from yesterday. A lot of things have already gone out the door. You know, like we've had some, uh, a few um, knitters, bow we had virtual, whole colors. We had virtual Vikings. We had virtual Vikings last night. Like half of what we showed you from Daydream Dye Works is no longer available. I'm sorry. We'll ask her to dye it again. It's so pretty. Um, we still have mindful collection stuff left. I'm going to order more. If you want to take advantage of the 15% off and it sells out. Any of the mindful collection sells out. Um, I can't necessarily offer this for the Daydream Dye Works because supply is wonky right now for her bases, what she dyes the, dyes the colors on. But for the accessories, um, the mindful collection specifically, if we sell out because we only got five of each and you want it, um, contact the shop and we can try to work out or I'll try to work on the settings online, but I can't promise that either. We'll try to let you buy it, pre-order it at the 15% off price. Okay, subscribe and share and all that good stuff. And we love you and be safe. And have a good weekend. Bye. <laughs>